Hey, welcome to Loose Change. As always, please allow faster viewers to play through. I'm Jim Evans. We are back for now anyway, and it's great to see you. Of course, we've been on hiatus, and with the nice weather, we thought, you know what, let's try and take the show out on the road, and we're gonna do so down to Boardman High School and talk with a very special guest. So hang tight for that, but first, I want to offer my congratulations and way to go to everybody locally as well as around the state who are involved with getting schools up and running as well as fall sports. Here we are. Now we've had some bumps along the way of course, but for the most part everyone has followed procedure and protocol. So keep up the good work, the great work, and keep it going. You keep it right here. We're going to head to Spartan Stadium and talk with Coach Rick Sheppes right after this here on Loose change. Sending files, watching your favorite shows, adjusting your smart thermostat, calling mom. There's so much you can do today, it's amazing. But how do you manage all that new technology? Armstrong gives you control of your home network and all the entertainment that makes your world go round. If you need help, we're easy to reach for support too, by phone, web, or at our service locations. Armstrong is here to make everything work for you. Armstrong, life made easy. Welcome back to Loose Change, I'm Jim Evans. You see, I wasn't kidding. We have one of the area's all-time great players and coaches with us yeah. again. The one, the only, Rick Shep. It's Rick, great to see you. Thanks great for being be with here, us. Great to be here, Jim. It's awesome, yeah. Absolutely. and. Um, you got new things going on, new challenges ahead, sure. moving forward. Yeah. But before we get to that, let's talk about the accomplishments and the successes you had as athletic director at Youngstown City Schools. And, and of course, um, you had to have a, a detailed plan coming in. Yeah, yeah. You want to build this thing up. But what was the blueprint? How, how did it all get started? What, in your mind, this is what we got to do first to get this Well, moving. you know, it, it was actually an accident that I got on board, you know, with a meeting with Chris Mohib and Ronnie Irusi about, about six months before I actually started working for the district. They actually asked me to come in and evaluate the school district. You know, they were planning some changes. I remember that, structure, yeah. And they were going to some neighborhood K-8 elementary schools. Uh, and they gave me some facts behind what was driving the move from a, from a school standpoint. They, they felt that athletics could be a great driver, you know, for young people to get more actively involved, get in better shape, you know, and then start to, you know, use the intimate relationships that you develop while participating in sports as an athlete or that, that coaching opportunity for that recognizable moment where that, where that young student athlete needs the right kind of talking to that gets them over the edge. You know, we wanted to improve grades, we wanted to improve right. attendance. And, and, you know, after evaluating the, the district over the course of five months, you know, I, I really became a believer. I thought, you know, there's enough talent in the district yes. uh, that we could really do some things. You know, it was gonna be about finding the right human capital available. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I thought that this could really be a great project if I could partner with the right people to come in and work in the district that wanted to make a commitment to our kids and what we were doing. Uh, and also the right partnerships fell in place right away locally in the city. I mean, it was great cooperation uh, throughout the city, you know, with several different organizations, Rick Fried over at the Comco Corporation, you know, the Moransky Group, you know, Ed's wife is big with the, uh, the Youngstown Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. you know, the YMCA, great relationship with the YMCA that we still have. Uh, but it was going to take great partnerships. The Ohio Glaciers, Anthony Vross and the Simon Roofing Group that sponsor baseball. I mean, just a lot of well-wishing and a lot of people, you know, willing to be on board, you know, provide some extra swag for these kids in the city that makes them feel important. You know, YSU was a big contributor with, with the use of their facilities. We sure. became a great partner for them, uh, obviously working with Matt Rawlins and Ron Strollo, you know, on renting some facilities, renting the indoor track, renting the field for rugby. Uh, and some of the initiatives we were starting. Uh, we just developed some great partnerships and our, and our kids could feel that sense of identity, that sense of purpose. And then, and then when I actually came on board with the district, you know, uh, right away we, we, we got the East High Golden Bear back. Yes. You know, which, right. which, which obviously. Right. That, was, that was big. You know, it, 
it it was huge. Yes. You know, uh, you know, when Chris and I discussed how important that would be, I told him it would be immeasurable. Uh, the Golden Bears felt very slighted, you know, when the when the mascot had changed. Yes. A lot of rich tradition, a lot of great people, uh, you know, from East High School. Yes. That have affected this valley in a very positive way yes. and still continue to affect the valley yes. in a positive way. So we got out of the gate with momentum right away. Uh, we were adding sports programs. We, we on, onboarded all the right coaches, male and female, and uh, we immediately saw an increase in, in uh, participation. Yep. I mean, and I want to say by, by 400 percent. I mean, we, we went from you know one, one high school participating with one middle school program in just a couple sports, you know, each sports season. You know, we went to you know from about 350 participants in sports. Wow. To, to close to 1,600 in a short wow. period of time. And, and, and I gotta tell you, the grade point averages reflected that. You know, it, it, gave, it gave our principals an opportunity to use sport play, practice and play as an incentive to get better grades with the kids. And, and I promise you this, we had some administrators like Rick Fox over at Wilson mm -hmm. who used that. There's some great athletes over there that weren't doing their homework and, and, and weren't you know, getting it done in the classroom. They were missing too much school. So he definitely used sports, you know, for play, and, and those kids showed up to play. They, you know, yeah. one thing for sure, they wanted to participate. They were definitely drawing their identity from sport, but they were willing to get it done in the classroom to do so. So from a behavior standpoint, it was one of the greatest experiences that I've ever had. You know, I was really fortunate to have the opportunity for three years. You know, I thought, I thought you know, happy accident would be a three to five year plan anyway. Right. It right. ended up being three you know, and, and with a bright future. I'm glad you, you talked about, uh, you know, grade point averages and things like that, because this was a lot more than just athletics, as, as you point out. Yeah. And, and even beyond that, uh, for kids just to have this, you know, athletic connection and connection to the schools yes. to, to, to take home and, uh, you know, to yeah. have in their lives uh, throughout the week. Well, to be honest with you, you know, we were the community engagement piece. You know, yeah. where, you know, where, where, you know, due to whether it's fortunate or unfortunate, you know, where parents weren't coming to parent right. teacher conferences right. or they weren't coming to the schools, you know, we were giving them a reason to come into the schools. Correct. They were coming in to support their kids during the week with athletic contests mm -hmm. on the weekends with middle school contests. You know, we, we, we opened up, you know, with our relationship with the parks and recs, you know, we, we really got off the ground, you know, with uh, with youth programming. And I, and I really have to thank the Volney League in football, you know, because we, we were able to partner with them and, and they got off the ground. You know, we, we had our bumps in the road along the way, but without the effort that those, those coaches put in and that organization, we would have never got to where, to where we got so quickly. Did you play in the Volney League? I did. <laughs> you know what, I, I, I didn't. I actually, I actually played in the Catholic School League, oh, okay. you yeah. know, going to St. Nicholas yeah. grade school. And then I played in the, in the Struthers SBL. Okay. You know, so, you know, so I went through, you know, we still talk about those old rivalries from baseball, you know, because you had your neighborhood teams sure, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's really what the concept was, you know, in, in how they were going to try to get things going surrounding the neighborhood school. Yeah. You know, but we found one thing for sure, you know, parents would make sure they got their kids to practice and play. So, you know, transportation is a heavy burden for yes. the Youngstown City Schools. Right. Uh, but we found for athletics, we were slowly starting to wean you know, our, our parents into a normal behavior of after school functions where they were more actively involved. You know, great thanks to all the supportive individuals who care so much about the kids that they were getting, they were getting kids to and from practice and helping parents anyway. Yep. You know, but that was a huge thing. Absolutely. You know, we got a, you know, Sue Paris and Tass and Brooks ran our food service. You know, we added an extra meal and a snack, you know, along with what was being provided in the after school program to our athletes so you know sue ended up retired but tassin is still in there swinging and providing meal plans for kids so that was a tremendous benefit you know out of, out of all the schools that i've worked for youngstown city schools have tremendous resources you know from Polly emmerich down at chauffin to the food service program which is housed out of chauffin you know with the educational opportunities that we have in the district, you know, the, the, the Youngstown Early College and the option there. I mean, it's a viable, it's a viable place to, you know, it's a viable choice to have for your child.
And of course, we, we want to touch on it, the accomplishments, uh, obviously, out in the field, uh, you know, on the court and, and, and on the track and, and everything. And, you know, Cheney returns, uh, varsity football, the Steel Valley. Yeah. Uh, East has a, a rugby yeah. championship, right, state championship. Yeah, yeah. Great things happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, track, women's, women's exactly. track state championship yes. indoor. You know, tremendous track success, scholarships that the kids are getting. You know, prepping them, prepping them for those scholarships through the National Reporting Center and making sure they have those student ID numbers. So, you know, it's a tremendous effort, you know, working to make sure we're on pace with more class offerings academically for kids. You know, we brought the we brought YSU, Maryland, Abruba and YSU's yeah. academic team mm -hmm. in with our counselors and, and, and we met over over their preparation and how do we make sure we provide more opportunities so that our, our, our students are ready. You know, we had a great SAT prep program from PSAT to SAT prep program you know we had we had numbers of people scores of people doing that so just just with the individuals in the equation you know special special group of individuals that, that just love the kids and want to contribute yeah. to their success and I still uh, have fond recent memories of that uh, Cheney uh, returned to varsity football, the game against Mooney at Rain yeah, Stadium, yeah. and it was a packed house, yeah. and it was really cool, old old yeah. Steel Valley, old City Series football there. There's no doubt about it, and Rain Stadium being a focal point of, of, of those traditions. You know, yes. back, back in the day, you know, when we played, you know, four teams shared Rain Stadium. Right. You know, Youngstown North, Youngstown East, Ursland, right. and Youngstown Rain, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is where the property still sits. Correct. You know, coming out of that tunnel was something special yeah. for all of us that had a chance to be there. And then over on the south side, South Stadium, yeah. handling, you know, Wilson, Cheney, uh, Mooney, Mooney. Mm -hmm. you know, and Youngstown South, you know, special, special places to play. If you were to do it again, would you, would you do anything differently? I doubt it because of the, you know, the progress that's uh, the structures is in place and the progress that's been made. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, the, the one thing that I've been fortunate uh, to have as an ability, you know, regardless of what kind of teacher I ever was or whatever coach that I ever was, I was always good at initiative skills. And I always was good at a big picture view of how things yeah. should be. You know, and, and because of the many great people that I've been able to be around, you know, yeah. from, from, from our coaching staff at Mooney under Don Butchie, you know, Ron Stoops, Tony Congemi, Jimmy Cole. I mean, I could, I could name a yeah. list. Paul Cassano, for goodness sakes. I was just talking about him the other day. And then having the ability to go play for Coach Narduzzi and the type of player coach that he was and, and what, his, you know, what his outlook was on, on how to build that program with less resources. And then being able to finish my career under Jim Tressel, you know, uh, with the organization and just the 24-7 mentality and, and, and what you can accomplish, you know, if your number one focus is, is, is the students, the student athletes and building your program, you know. So, so really, you know, having those initiative skills and, and, and seeing the plan and then, and then just creatively with what's going out there, you know. I mean, setting the right targets. We, we, we decided to use basketball as a driver, you know, because kids love basketball. Sure. You know, and, and we knew that we were going to be able to put five basketball players on the court, male and female, yep. at those K-8 elementary. So we thought that would be a driver. You know, in all of my coaching endeavors, you know, the youth programs that feed the district are extremely important. Yeah. Extremely important. You know, when I was in Maslin, my experience with the Boys and Girls Club taught me to, to immediately approach them for their support as well because we grow our services together. You know, for a $7 membership, you could participate in athletics. You know, there's extra insurance provided. You know, there's coaches that, you know, they do background checks at the Boys and Girls Club for coaches. It provides some structure, some soundness for the way the kids are being treated. You know, so, so having these, you know, setting that direction in place was all, was all positive right out of the gate. And then, and then just having a, a philosophy of failure is just not an option. And, and just being relentless about your work, you know, because it doesn't follow a time clock. No. There's no doubt about no. it. No. There's something coming up at all hours of the day. But, it, and it's not just a job. You know, when, when, when the Army, Navy, and Air Force pick, you know, <laughs> yeah. they tell you to pick a service and pick a challenge. Yeah. You know, that's, that held true for us yeah. in the city, and it still holds true. Because, you know, the, the coaches aren't just working a job. And I don't know how many people realize this, but, the people that we hired to work in the athletic program in the district were working 24-7 for kids at all hours of the day or night, you know, whether it be transportation, whether it be, 
you know, finding kids different places to live, working, working the food service program, providing extra meals for kids. You know, every day was a 16 hour day. We're gonna take a break. <laughs> we'll be back with more Rick Shepherds right after this. Sending files, watching your favorite shows, adjusting your smart thermostat, calling mom. There's so much you can do today, it's amazing. But how do you manage all that new technology? Armstrong gives you control of your home network and all the entertainment that makes your world go round. If you need help, we're easy to reach for support too, by phone, web, or at our service locations. Armstrong is here to make everything work for you. Armstrong, life made easy. Back on Loose Change with Rick Shepitz. I'm Jim Evans, and uh, moving on to uh, new new challenges now. I know yeah. you're doing some some broadcasting. Sure, uh, sure. What's maybe in the future for you now? Well, you know, uh, had an opportunity to do some color for YSN here yep. throughout mm -hmm. the course of this season, and you know, uh, with their video stream capabilities, you know, you combine mm -hmm. that with huddle streaming. You know, I thought I thought there's a number of platforms out there that could assist young athletes in every sport in their recruiting endeavors. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these things could be very costly to families, and and maybe our families in this area couldn't provide. You know, with 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 the foundation that DJ Oakley set forth at YSN and working with their group. You know, their goal is to serve the families. You know, provide exposure to the kids right, yeah. in all the athletic endeavors that they have. And, and, I, and I went to him and I said, hey, what about, you know, because of your streaming capabilities and the fact that you've got all this game film, right. you know, what about, what about creating a recruiting piece? You know, so I think, I think as we get ready to move forward and as this football season ends and basketball begins, we'll be working on a recruiting platform, uh, you know, that, that, that could service all the schools that participate in, in, in the YSN network, which I believe are 51 schools. Yeah. You know, we'll be able to do some portfolios on kids, assist the coaches, the players, and the families, you know, and create some recruiting portfolios that could be easily accessible to college coaches. Um, I think I think that that will lead to, you know, hyperlinks on those portfolios mm -hmm. so, that, so that coaches could get the much needed film that they require, plus the vital stats on the kid, you know, right. um, you know, G, GPA test score, which is very important, you know. Uh, vital stats on their playing career, you know what, you know what sports are they playing, uh, you know along with those uh, major course of study that they may or may not be interested in, uh, you know. But that'll be on the forefront of that recruiting platform. And I'd like to say we'll get into some camps in the Tri County sure. area, you know, you know, with 51 schools and additional schools probably along the way. There's no reason why we couldn't provide, you know recruiting football camps during the May recruiting yeah, period. That's the yeah. last two weeks of April and all of May mm -hmm. uh, for football players. Running basketball camps, you know. Uh, we got Quinn Pushkar that's, that's already doing that with another organization. You know, he'll he'll handle the basketball camp end of things. And, and we've got young DeAndre Brown in the Dre Day Foundation that can assist with those things uh, in, in doing some, some highly skilled basketball camps that could help showcase talent. You know, we'll add we'll add recruiting video. DJ did a nice recruiting spot for a softball player uh, right here at Boardman. You know, where, where he came out and shot you know different shots of her batting stance, shot her feet as she was swinging and hitting to show the power. Sh showed some fielding and some base running. You know, so those are all going to be things that are going to be part of the future of YSN to grow the platform that they have. The big thing is the film that they have. Yes. So if they have if they have volleyball yeah, film video, now, right? Yeah. I know I know we got some requests and. You know, when I tell people, you know, what I'm doing in the short term there, and they, they talk about, you know, hey, you know, what about soccer down the road? Yeah. All, all those things are to come. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's going to come, you know, by way of able-bodied adults that are passionate in those sports yeah. that want to produce those things. With the same goals in mind, Jim, same thing in education, right? Keep the kids first place. Yep. You know, get them actively involved in their recruiting. Uh, you know, and, and, and who knows, you know, uh, we might be able to provide the right advice so that these yeah. parents and these families and these youngsters can make some better decisions for themselves. For Absolutely. Sure. Boy, yeah. gr great possibilities there. Yeah. As a former high school and college coach, what right. was the first thing you looked at and looked for in a recruit? 100 percent is grade point average. Yeah. You know, we're trying to identify early and often. You know, and, and shoot, the recruiting dynamic has changed so much over the course of the last 30 years. I mean, that would be a show unto itself. 
and then every sport has its own nuances with how with yes. how they recruit and what they actually look for. Yes. You know, but but right out of the gate, I mean, it's 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 academic performance okay. and grade point average. You know, then you start to look at you know how much college credit plus does the kid have on their resume? What type of major course of study are they really interested in? You know, I know the scholarship might be the number one goal. And some kids might even forego, you know, hey, if, if I'm going to get a scholarship, maybe I attend a school that might not have what I really want to major in, mm -hmm. you know. So they might make some of those tough decisions, you know. You know, I say, I say follow your heart and follow your gut. We were all meant to be, you know, we were all created, you know, in that great image to, to, to be an individual and be who you are. So, you know, as they search for themselves and what they're going to be, you know, those choices become key, and I think we could we could provide some of that essential help. And the college coaches could get the film early, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, earlier than they would normally. Sure. You know, and they'll still have the huddle as a possibility too. You miss being out on the sideline. I think we'll see you there again. You know, I do. Perhaps I do. down the road. Yeah, I do, and I, I didn't really intend to be out of coaching. It was just, yeah. you know, for me, you know, I made a great commitment to Waynesburg University. Right. And, you know, and I felt, you know, and, and, you know, Waynesburg was a great place for, for me and for my family. You know, uh, my wife and I be married 32 years here yeah. in October. We have nice three, town too, three beautiful daughters, yeah. you know, Maria here uh, just, you know, in her early 30s now. She'll be 31 here coming wow. up. My daughter Katie's 26 and Gina just finished school, you know, at, at La Roche and is in, you know, all are doing well. Maria's in California now. Katie's in Tennessee and Knoxville working at the UT library. Gina just, she's working in the UPMC medical network. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah, working in patient uh, care and, and uh, you know, but really, you know, a blessing, you know, and, uh, you know, Waynesburg gave us that opportunity. Yes. You know, right, right. so grateful to them, but it was just time, you know, had some great opportunities. God bless. And I always thanked our, our families you know, for making that commitment to send their kids to Waynesburg, because otherwise we don't get a chance. Yeah. We don't get that privilege to coach their kids, yeah. just like all the places that I've been. But, but I, you know, I'm a free agent. You know, you know, I still see coaching in, in my future. You know, okay. the love and passion that I have for sports in general and for the game of football, you know, will le never leave me. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm watching football every day, you know, to some degree. You get a chance, you get a, a chance to be away from the game a little bit, you know, obviously. Uh, changes your perspective somewhat, you know, uh, makes you realize how fortunate you were that you had the opportunities that you did. Um, it's in your blood. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But but it's about the right fit for me, you know, yeah. and even e even evaluating the, the major college level versus small college, you know. Right. Uh, I started to grow more fond of, of the community college mm -hmm. standpoint. I think there's a lot of students out there, Jim, that, that really aren't sure what they want to major in. They're facing a lot of pressure on them about what they should major in maybe a little bit too soon. You know, so there's yeah. some community college possibilities out there that are possible gap year possibilities until they really know for sure. You know, you know, I know Coach Tress talks about workforce, you know, and, and the, with the businesses that YSU and with the, with the incubator wants to bring to the area, you know, along with Mike Ruley, you know, you talk about, you know, workforce ready and building a workforce in Youngstown where, where you're going to get a credential and, and have a higher paying job. Those possibilities are out there. So, yes. you know, maybe there's some strategic planning in there for me mm -hmm. with something like that. You know, so we'll see. You know, I'm a free agent. I'll yeah. keep all doors open. I, I'll make sure I honor my commitments, you right. know. And, right. and, you know, when I did that with the Youngstown City Schools, I, you know, I committed for that time period and stayed loyal to that. Now that that's, that's over, you know, so we'll look forward to possibilities. What was the, the biggest thing as we get close to wrapping it up here, the biggest difference between coaching at the collegiate level and, and high school for you? I think, you know, um, you know there, there are subtle differences yeah. that really shouldn't be treated as subtle differences. You know, uh, you know, when, when, when I was working with kids at the high school level, which, which started at the youth level, yeah. you know, we were raising young men and women because of their love for sport. Right. You know, they came in and, and we had a target audience. So we were raising them and preparing them for that college level. Well, you know, when those kids graduate, and especially nowadays, you know, that, that still bridges the next couple years. I think, a, I think a, a, a student athlete between 17 and 20 has a certain mindset and I think that changes between 18 yeah. and 20 
Then I think at 21, 22, they they have a different mindset. Yeah. You know, keeping them busy, keeping them active, keeping their options open, and doing that that better advising. You know, paying attention to those teachable moments that matter so much as you're trying to keep them motivated yeah. on their future is something that you know athletics and people like me and, and the many people that do it in education can play a significant role with those yeah. kids. So you know, that's where we want to be centered. You know, to make an impact. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. But sure. before we do that, I want to make yeah. sure I congratulate you on your induction to the Curbstone Coaches Hall of Fame. And it's a real honor for me to be a part you of too. that with you. So you know, I, I was so excited, Jim, when I saw you and for all the good work that you've done and the well, selfless work that. that you've done for the area and for area sports. You know, I was really excited to see you, appreciate that. Uh, you. being inducted into that Hall of Fame. I, I know how much it matters to you. It's, yeah. it's, it's much deserved. And Well, you as well. You, know, I, you should have been in there years ago. I, I was surprised. That you weren't already there. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> well, you know, know. I, I, I've been blessed. I've been blessed at Cardinal Mooney High School and at, and at Youngstown State with that same honor. So thanks to the Curbstone coaches as Abs well, absolutely. and Greg Goulis and uh, yes. and, uh, and my guy Dan Wathen for thinking of me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, great to see you. Yeah, you too. Talk to you as you always. Too. Good luck. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you again. Yes, sir. Rick Sheppitz. Yes. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. There's so much you can do with technology. It's amazing. Armstrong gives you control of your home network and all the entertainment that makes your world go round. If you need help, we're easy to reach for support, too. Armstrong. Life made easy. That's going to do it for our show. Thanks to Coach Rick Sheppis. Best of luck to him. Thanks as well to Marco Marinucci, the terrific people here at Borman High School. And as always, thanks to Greg Roden and all of you. Check us out on YouTube. And a reminder, stay safe, stay healthy, okay? And it's for everyone's safety and not just two points, all right? I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next time here on Loose Change. Out, gone!